This is a notification under 18 U.S.C. 4 to the Commander-in-Chief, having failed in notifications to, the, to a judge, Annette Turek, to civil authority, the FBI Greenville Field Office, rejected it, rejected everything. They opened a file and left it unattended for 27 days at the time I talked to them. And they finally did something. They ordered me never to return to their parking lot. So I guess I don't return to their building. Not that I ever got, get very far in their building. They have complete control and yet they ordered me out forever. And let my hostage die and then they'll find that she died of cancer. Cancer that left untreated by an elder cleanser. Mr. President, there are 22 felonies listed on the internet at Bryant Kittrell Facebook. Bryant, as in Bryant, standard spelling, Kittrell, like the town in North Carolina, north of uh, Raleigh, K-I-T-T-R-E-L-L. -L. Our, our family gave our name for that town. It was Kittrell, Kittrell's Depot, and then it became the township of Kittrell, and then that township, I guess, included a town that became a very small town in North Carolina. Mr. President, under 18 U.S.C. 4, I have failed. Judge Tur Annette Dur Turek rejected them, said they had nothing to do with the case, even though the first four and, an and another one had to do with the, main the only witness I was allowed. They don't, in Goldsboro, don't always let the defendant testify, and the J magistrate, Aldana Jones, refused to allow me to testify, and the other side allowed that to occur, violating the law. They had a conspiracy, a federal conspiracy. That's one of the felonies. Then we have another magistrate, Alan Vickery, who raised my bell because I even thought that I could t dare report to him a felony. He raised my bell to every cent I had, I'd have to spend on a bail bondsman. And that's how he determined that I had a, that 3500 I had $355, 3500 he raised my bell from zero because I talked about felonies. I reported it under a law that has been our law for all but one year of our republic. 1790, the, crime, the Crimes Act of 1790 had this law and it's been in one form, so slowly evolved to a more simpler form but they, it always was dealing with reporting felonies to avoid misprision of a felony. Mr. President, I have failed to get any military to do it. I had a local attorney, Martha Beach, a fine woman, call properly to the judge advocate here in Goldsboro for Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. The judge advocate never returned the phone call. They wasted um, eight or nine days of time hiding from returning the phone call because they did not want to accept notification. They don't have that privilege. If they are a civil or military authority, it's their duty under that law to accept it. There may be crimes by them failing to do their duty. If there are, I want them fully prosecuted. Those eight days may well be the life and the death of the lady in question who is being elder cleansed by UNC Wayne Memorial Hospital and SMOC uh, Oncology Center and Jason Boyd, MD, an evil man who is an elder cleanser. I don't believe this, Mr. President. I know this. There is no doubt. So, Mr. President, I ask that you accept this notification and that you go forward and do what is re required to be done under the law. But first, you, you go forth and get the lady rescued. I have a sep separate tape, an addendum to one of these notifications saying how you get her immediately to a safe hospital, one that has nothing to do with the University of North Carolina. Their screen fills 40 miles away. Go to that Vident Hospital. ECU, East, East Carolina, is a competitor to UNC. They'll be happy to uh, do the right thing, I hope. I hope there are not elder cleansers there, too. 
she needed to be detoxed and she needs to be quickly given the second round of chemo that they said she couldn't have because it'd kill her. And instead they put her in a coma so that she could die of the cancer, stage four cancer. They didn't give her the second round because the first round worked too well. And the doctor came up with a screwy medical opinion that said she would die. Well, she might die, but that was true of the first round when she had complete liver failure and the man refused to see her until I demanded it and I sped up the chemo by 10 days and she would have been dead had we waited the 10 days, but she wasn't allowed to see him until I made it very clear that they had to see her that very day and they relented and allowed us the next morning and she got chemo rather than 10 days later, she got chemo the next day, but only two out of three because they don't work Saturdays. They're so professional that they got to close on Saturdays and Sundays, and their 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 patients only get two if they they schedule them on a Thursday. Well, she had to be scheduled on a Thursday, Mr. President. The FBI Greenville refused to take the notification of felonies. They refused to do anything other than open a file for the victim, and wait till she died from the elder cleanser, by refusal to give her the proper one chance in a million maybe, but chemo did work the first time with complete liver failure. She was dark yellow, she barely could walk, and the next day she was better, and the day after better. And yes, she had chemo effects, but that's always the case. But they didn't let her have a, a, a chance at life. They instead put her in a coma using heavy sedatives that need to be withdrawn carefully. The doctors will know what to do in Greenville's hospital guidance. Do not go to a UNC hospital. They are part of the uh, of the uh, conspiracy here in Goldsboro, and they may be part throughout North Carolina. It's hard to know, but I know UNC has medical network has failed to respond properly to my 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 pleas, Mr. President. Get an FBI health care fraud unit out here to protect this witness. She is so crucial to shutting down these people in this area. She needs to be saved. She needs to be given her chemo, and it won't be easy. But, Mr. President, I have been secluded from her as they do for elder, cleanser, elder cleansers, seclude the people, people from their protectors, and I don't know whether or not she's even dead. But if she's savable, Mr. President, Donald J. Trump is the man who will get it done because you've got the array of commander-in-chief forces won't be using many of them, but you might use one or two. And you're the head civilian officer in this nation. You have anything at your disposal, primarily the DOJ and the FBI, the good part. Find a good part. There's not one in Greenville. They have allowed those three men to laugh at, laugh at Henny Carlisle and do nothing. Don't even check to see if her claims, four times she claimed, it's under duress, it's under duress. Not in those words, but in words that everybody who have heard them know that after she said nasty things about me, then she turned to four different directions and said to the 28 or 18 or 12 people, I didn't count them, but there was so many faces. In her hospital room, it was abuse just by having that many, just so I could see her one last time. After she got through saying I stole her car, even though her car was next to me, after that, uh, next to my car at her house because we lived there 16 years. The Goldsboro Police Department uh, approved a crowbar eviction of me from her house while she was in the hospital so that I was totally isolated from her. This is awful. This should not be happening in your country, Mr. President. This is, she lived through the Nazis. She's going to die through your civilian um, counterparts in Wayne County that run it. Wayne County is corrupt. The sheriff's department, they beat me up in the courthouse in front of the clerk of court who did not say a thing that I had been feloniously assaulted, violating federal law. And I ultimately was thrown out of jail without being allowed my first appearance where I would have announced how many crimes had been committed in the felonious assault of me in front of the uh, clerk of court and three, four, five of his deputies were watching. They knew that the guy struck me from behind without saying a word to me with no one else in that room. They were on the other side of the windows. They heard everything. Him not saying anything before he struck me in the bottom of my spine and I got arrested for resisting arrest. 
yeah, after I got beat up, I couldn't, I could barely stand without shaking because I, my spinal column had been dam damaged by the punch, but only momentarily. Uh, but he was trying to cripple me, possibly. I don't know what his intent was, but a deputy sheriff sergeant was sicked on me by the clerk of court. And he did not affect anything that resembled a lawful arrest. You can't do it without saying a word with my back to him and with no one else in the room. That could not be a lawful arrest unless he's got an incredible story to tell. And he had instead, he claimed that I was going to jump through the wall and assault the clerk of court. No one else could do that. And I am a 68 and a half year old man, Mr. President. That was ridiculous. And the magistrate, Alan Vickery, uh, he said, that's enough. The man's guilty enough that we need to um, hold him till he, his trial. And I said, I said, that was the, the clerk was on the other side of the wall behind his four clerks. And the guy used the fact that the clerk, the clerk of court was who I was going to get while holding on to the door, leaving the premises. Mr. President, this is a farce. You have got to put these people, a large number of people in jail. Yes, you don't do it, but you will lead and say to the new man, Mr. William Barr, tell him to do his job and do it quickly, particularly with respect to Henny Carlisle, a servant of the U.S. Air Force ever since she married, an incredible mechanic who was so special that he served at embassies throughout the world, training foreigners how to maintain our planes. He was in Ethiopia. He was in Morocco. I think they were in Spain, and they met when he was in the Netherlands. He was a remarkable man, but he was betrayed by the Air Force as well. Now we have Mrs. Carlisle, at least betrayed by Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. The base commander and the staff judge advocate need to be investigated. They are the ones that have hidden intentionally, no doubt about it. Please, Mr. President, save this woman. You got to do it, do it first thing tomorrow morning. I, I will try to get some worthy aid to find out about this and to get it to your attention so that you can draw up the orders to the DOJ to get on it and the FBI to get on it, find out if it's true or false and protect the lady's life regardless. And you can do that. She's got the insurance. Get her out of the murders, murderer's lair which is her home in all probability. And I won't say the dress, but look under Carlisle, Green Meadow Way in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Mr. President, this is my best friend, but she is so remarkable. She should not be the one killed by the indifference of your military. Yes, Seymour Johnson. They have a lot of explaining to do. And if you can find a crime to accuse each of them of, do it. They, ha they deserve no sanction. And that's the opposite meaning of the word. They, sh they deserve no rights except under criminal law to defend themselves in due process. They need to be prosecuted if there's any crime that your prosecutors can find. And if Mrs. Carlisle dies, they are an accessory to her murder by failing to do their job. Perhaps it's not prosecutable, but everyone that joined the conspiracy is responsible for the intent of the conspiracy, which was her murder. I want her to live, please. Move fast. So far, I've wasted two weeks with the blasted Air Force. The Air Force does not know that they have a requirement under 18 U.S.C. 4 that ducking is not allowed. St <laughs> Straighten out your armed forces. Let them know that on extreme cases, they are indeed the last resort. Well, actually you are, the commander in chief, the head civil and the head military authority of the United States of America. Mr. President, do America proud and save a six, uh, 50 plus year naturalized American citizen who has spent her entire life serving the U.S. Air Force. The last 28 years, she was the head volunteer uh, towards the end of the last 20 years, probably, for the tax program. She's a tax expert. She gave her time to save one year 
the whole gang of them saved a quarter million dollars in tax return monies that they did them for free. And now she's been betrayed by the U.S. Air Force. Don't betray her, Mr. President. Get her safe, if, if at all possible, if she's savable, and prosecute those that killed her if she's dead or too close to death that she dies. Prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. I am devastated by my country, but I'm not the one I'm worried about. Save Antoinette Henriette Demers Carlisle. She's, last I heard, was in Goldsboro. If not, she's probably in Yorktown, Pennsylvania, with her son, Leon Carlisle, and his co-conspirator wife, Candace Reynolds Carlisle. They have to be arrested forthwith. They broke into my home. They lived in my home. Yes, it's her home too, but they had no right to break in. And the, the officer Harrison of the Goldsboro Police Department sent him away for the rest of any term you can find. He basically made it possible for her to get kidnapped in plain sight. We're at and near Seymour Johnston Air Force Base. She would like to be able to see the trees again. She wants to hear the birds again. Make it possible, Mr. President, make it possible. I beg of thee, do your job and do it well and do it fast. And get all the lawyers that have brains to help you and the FBI who have honor and honesty to in get involved, those that you can, that are healthcare fraud people to begin with or rescue team for hostages. She is a hostage but she's a hostage under, under heavy sedation. She needs medical care, she needs an ambulance as well to take her 40 miles up to Greenville to a safe hospital. A safe hospital, I hope. These days, I'm not sure anywhere is a safe hospital. So leave it in the hands of those that you know you can trust. You have the authority to get everyone in action and to get her saved, if at all possible, please. Do not dilly or dally. I know you're at a, about the same time I'm doing this, you're at a rally in Pennsylvania. When you get back, this will be on your desk, I hope. I'll try to make sure someone puts it there for you to watch. So that's the end. I'm begging. My best friend deserves America to do what they should have done a long time ago, 30 some odd days ago. and. Your FBI in Greenville needs to be totally revitalized with other agents. Get the ones there out of there. There's something rotten there. Three of them are rotten. Well, how did the others not bo bother with what they were doing, leaving an open file of a, of a possible hostage? That is awful. This is William Samuel McAuley II, also known as Fight the Corrupt, also known as Fight All Corrupt saying, Mr. President, I leave it in your competent hands. Good night.